The original Spartanburg General Hospital had four floors, a basement, and a sub-basement for mechanical functions. There were dining rooms, a kitchen and laundry, x-ray equipment, operating and recovery rooms, a library, a pharmacy, and an emergency room. A solarium allowed patients to enjoy the medical value of sunshine and fresh air. And while there were a few private rooms, patients mostly bunked together in wards. There was also a maternity suite and a nursery. Spartanburg General Hospital was not the only facility to open that year. Wallace Thompson Hospital, now known as Union Medical Center, opened in 1921 as well. And in 1925, another hospital opened in Spartanburg, this one on East Main Street. Dr. Black opened the Mary Black Hospital, named for his wife and in partnership with his sons, Drs. Samuel Orr Black and Hugh Snotty Black. By the late 19th century, the medical profession had started to become more professional. Mostly physicians were treating people in their own homes, but occasionally they started to find that they needed some place to provide more intensive care to acutely ill patients or to patients who needed to have surgery. And so they would set up what were often called cottage hospitals because they were set up in homes. Some of those doctors are starting to build small buildings that were specifically intended to be hospitals. And so you do see that with the Spartanburg Hospital. As long as Spartanburg General Hospital has existed, it has trained nurses. Nurses have been the lifeblood of the institution since day one. You need to listen to your nurse. They can either make or break you as far as your patient care. And so we're so dependent on them. The first class of nurses graduated from Spartanburg General Hospital in 1922. Eighteen graduates were honored with a dinner and dance at the Cleveland Hotel on June 15, 1922. Graduates earned as much as $35 a month. Student nurses earned $10 to $15 a month, but were required to buy their own uniforms and books. From the beginning, Spartanburg General adopted the Good Samaritan Hospital philosophy of patient care. No applicant who may come to us in absolute need of hospital care and treatment shall be turned away because they have no means with which to meet their expenses. The Great Depression tested that philosophy. Sadly, more than 700 hospitals closed between 1929 and 1938. However, Spartanburg General remained open thanks in large part to one key group, its employees. Many accepted reduced wages and rallied around the hospital and their patients. All employees remained loyal to the institution. In fact, it appeared that in the face of these reductions, their loyalty increased. Patients often bartered for their care. Farmers paid in chickens, fruits, and vegetables. Their produce and livestock then fed the other patients. Flour and sugar sacks were turned into aprons and towels. One particular Depression-era innovation proved to be a harbinger of times to come. In 1934, Dr. Hillis Sheriff and hospital electrician W.C. Guy worked together to build a newborn incubator. It replaced the crude hot sand and bricks then used to warm newborns. That one incubator and the nurses in the newborn isolation room helped introduce the concept of a separate nursery for premature babies, a forerunner of our current level three neonatal intensive care unit. In that same year of 1934, one more brick was laid in the future of Spartanburg's healthcare. As a project of Spartanburg General, the first local cancer clinic opened under the direction of Dr. John Fleming. It became one of the first programs in the nation to be approved by the American College of Surgeons Commission on Cancer. In 